A very exciting part of our faith that I think a lot of us look forward to is that moment when we hear from God. We hear that still small voice guiding us on what to do. But the truth is, a lot of us haven't spent enough time in His presence to discern when He's even talking. And we often miss the moments. Let's have a chat. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here. Before we jump right in, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, whichever way it goes, so you stay tuned for every single video, every single Wednesday. Today's topic is such like a hefty one, and I know some parts of it might be a little like controversial, but ultimately I pray that we all watch this video, we listen to this video, and we go back to God and pray, and I pray that God all does a work in us on this topic. I'm gonna share different parts of this topic about hearing from God because like I said, I feel like it's a very, very exciting part about our faith. Like when you start building a relationship, people are like, I heard from God, I heard from God. And you're just like, what does that mean exactly? So I'm going to start off, oof, I have so many, I have so much thoughts and all that stuff. But I'm going to start off with what I actually do on this channel. A lot of times if you guys watch my videos, you see in the beginning, I always say, God gave me this idea by this or how he gave me the idea. And that's a very intentional thing that I do just so you can know that there's not a certain specific time and place that's exactly designated. Yes, the special place is important, but I share it more so to let you know that God can meet you anywhere and God can talk to you anywhere. I shared the moment where I was making my croissant. God spoke to me there. I shared the moment when I was driving on the highway and God spoke to me there. I think I probably shared a few more. Um, just casually chilling. And I also share about how I go to like a worship night and God speaks to me there. I share those different examples because i want to open our mind up to the idea that god can really speak to you anywhere anytime any place if you're constantly connected to him if you're constantly just conscious about god when we make an active choice to make god part of our daily lives and i think when you look for god in certain things it's almost like you can't not help but hear him. For some people, it is an audible voice that they hear. For some people, it just feels like a flood of ideas or flood of thoughts, That and that's God speaking to you. Sometimes it comes through dreams. All that stuff, there are different ways God can speak to us. And that's just why I wanted to share that really quickly. Uh, first, free your mind from you have to be at a specific time and place. He can talk to us at any time, any place, anywhere. We just have to be open. There's so much to cover in this topic that like, I'm like, I don't even know where to start. Because I'm going to talk about music a little bit too. And just honestly preparing for bed and whatnot. So I'm just going to start with the two Bible verses that I think I had in mind. And then we'll go from there. John 8, 47 is the first one. It says, whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. And I want to start with that verse and it's a very, very like harsh verse to hear. It's one of the ones that just, it kind of like wakes you up a little bit. And I want to say this, I think a lot of us, we really, yeah, this video is not going to be gentle. I'm sorry, y'all. This video is not going to be gentle. A lot of us treat God like he's disposable. A lot of us treat God as this person that we can go meet on Sunday, clock into service. You say you want the service, you might arrive on time, you might serve, you might praise God. But then the other six days of the week, you clock out. How can you hear from God that way? You can't hear from God if God is only a person that you meet at a certain time and place. If you feel like the only time you want to open your Bible or read or talk to God is when you're in that building, not going to happen. I think about it even when it comes to the talking stage. Imagine you met this little cute, fine, godly man. He texted me on Sunday, you guys had a great conversation, maybe like three, four, five hours. It was so great. You guys had such a special moment. It was like, gosh i love this man he's my man for me he's my kingdom husband and then monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday you don't hear from him and then sunday comes and he just expects to pick it right back up would you answer would you want to hear anything they have to say i think the answer is no and i think we do that a lot with god and this is definitely a huge journey to work on to make sure that god is not just somebody that you visit on sunday and you hear the word of god and the other six days you live a completely different life however it is a very very conscious effort to make sure that like god is not just somebody that you just visit on sunday and expect to experience the fullness of who he is one of them being hearing from god like i said when i was driving if i'm distracted constantly if i'm constantly like oh god is only somebody that i talked on sundays so many words so many of these videos would not have come out because i would not have been i i wrote this one of the things that i wrote down when i was thinking about this video is like have you created an environment conducive to hear from god a lot of us we really really we haven't created an environment to hear from god our minds are constantly flooded six days a week with god knows what and then we're like i can't hear from god 
how can you hear from God if you haven't created an environment for him to speak to you? And I really want to emphasize this of creating a conducive environment specifically for people that have the prophetic gift, even more specifically dreams, like God speaks to you towards your dreams. One of the things that I had to realize is that once you know the prophetic gift that God has given to you, whether it's through dreams, through visions or whatever, you have to make sure that you don't do things that will disrupt you from hearing from God. If let's say God is speaking to you through dreams, maybe right before you go to bed is not the time to watch a bunch of TikTok or a bunch of stuff like that. And it's hard because I love scrolling on TikTok, but it's like, that's not the time. You have to make sure that you're prepping to hear from God in your dreams. You have to make sure that your mind is open. So maybe before you go to bed, you listen to worship music, or even if just there's this, um, I think his name is William Augusto. He has this like three hour like worship keys thing. It's not even words. It's just like a soft melody. That's something you can play and you're preparing to hear from God. A lot of us haven't even prepared to hear from God. Maybe God gives you the thing of vision and you've watched whatever throughout the week. You've clouded your judgment. You've clouded your eyes that like, it's hard to like even break through like and especially the one with the dream because you will have a bunch of random dreams but if you really take the time to prepare start playing music start worshiping god whatever you can do to get your head in the right frame to where you can hear clearly i really want to reference the bible verse i think it's philippians 4 8 where it says make sure your thoughts are pure holy honorable beautiful all that where's the bible verse philippians 4 8 keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real honorable and admirable beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. I realize a lot of us, and this sometimes it's a little bit out of our control because we just have, as somebody who, I'm not trying to associate myself with that anymore, but as somebody who previously used to have the tendency to overthink, a lot of times when our thoughts are not pure, they're not holy, they're not admirable, they're not authentic, they're not real, like, whether you're daydreaming, you're fascinating. A lot of times that makes it hard for God to speak to us because your thoughts are so, there's so much noise around you that like you can't, you couldn't even decipher God's voice out of the many voices that you're probably hearing or all the things that are in your mind. So that's also one of the reasons why I wanted to lean into the music part. And I'm going to share a little bit of a moment where I kind of realized like the importance of the music we listen to. Can Christians listen to secular music? Um... I'm not going to tell you yes or no, I'm going to share my story and we'll go from there. But basically, as we all know, secular music is pretty much any music that's not like Christian or gospel, whatnot. And I remember there was this wedding video that I like to watch. I, my friend Faith probably knows what wedding video I'm talking about. I just love that wedding video, it's so cute. And I watched that video, wedding video about like two or three times at that point. I watched it more. But um, I noticed I started to have thoughts that were not good. And I kind of figure it out because for me personally, this is just my journey. My thoughts is where everything starts and something very, very little can trickle my thoughts into like a whole downward spiral. And it's one of those things that kind of sucks because it's kind of like, dang, I got to be sensitive to everything. It's like the music I listen to, what I watch, all that. It's like, it's annoying that you, I have to be so like sensitive, but I know that these things affect me. And it's something that I have to be very, very cautious of. Basically, I watched the wedding video. I watched it, like I said, two or three times. And I noticed that my thoughts were just a little funky the next like week or so. And I was like, yo, what is that? Like, I've been doing well. I'm like, I've been, in my word, I've been praying to God. I've been very mindful of what I watch or what I listen to. I wasn't really listening to any secular music for the most part. I was like, that's very strange. And then I was watching the wedding video again. And then there was a part where there was a song that came up. And I was like, oh. That's why my thoughts have been astray. It was a part of the song that, I'm not gonna sing it because it's just inappropriate, but it was an inappropriate part of the song. Like I said, secular music is a very, very hard one to cut off, but it's one where I feel like the enemy really uses us to one, stop us from hearing God, and two, attack our thoughts. And for me, I don't really listen to secular music that much. I mainly listen to gospel music, and even the secular music that I listen to, they're more so like love songs, maybe like some in like my language, or even the ones, even Nigerian music that I feel like they're not titled gospels, especially the one in my language they still reference God in some sense and that's just my way of trying to be like sensitive to make sure that I, like my heart is always open to hearing from God and my thoughts are always open to hearing from God but also even with shows I will never forget when I was like my sister was like yeah I can't be like these when I was like a teenager my sister was like yeah I can't be these like love and hip hop bad girls club shows you're like affecting you I'm like no they're not like you're lying like Ugh. I don't have to like I can watch it but it doesn't affect me and then all of a sudden I was cussing 
And if you know me, even through these videos, cussing doesn't even sound right coming out of my mouth. So number one, it just sounded funny. But nonetheless, it was still one of those things that like all these shows like Bad Girls Club, Love and Hip Hop, they cuss a lot on these shows. And I noticed that it was coming into my language. And then I was like, okay, you know what? Let me stop watching them eventually. I stopped watching them and all of a sudden, guess who wasn't cussing anymore? And another example that I'm going to share is with the gym. And this is where I really, really struggle with cutting off secular music because it's like 6 a.m. in the gym. If I was not listening to like Shy Rag or like something like, or like Pop Smoke or like just something like that's like rah rah rah, I was like, how can I get through my worship with listening to like, I exalt? <laughs> I'm joking around, but like it's so serious because like a lot of Christian music for the most part, they're more like, they're slow, they're a little chill. I was like, God, like I knew like, do, 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 do. I literally had a playlist that was called, that I call a trap that I used to play in the gym, stuff like Dreams and Nightmare at 6 a.m. in the morning. How can I possibly hear from God if I started my day and at that point when I was going to the gym, I would do my little prayer and then I will go to the gym, work out. During that time, I'll be listening to music and then maybe come back and read my word. I was like that safe sometimes. So again, sometimes I wasn't even in my word. And it was just like, that's how I started my day of listening to stuff like dream. Let me look at the songs on this playlist. I had Gucci Flip Flop. I had um, Geek. I had, um, <laughs> oh my days. I had Sicko Mode. I had... I have Pop Smoke in here. Yeah, Dreams of Nightmare, Party Girl, um, Ballin' by Mustard and Roddy Rich. This is a very old playlist, as you can tell by the song. Um, Dior, Chirac, like only by name. The first thing in the morning, I flooded my thoughts with stuff. And then sometimes you go throughout your day, you're like, why am I a little bit sad? Why am I a little bit this? A lot of it comes back to what we hear. A lot of it comes back to what we listen to. You really, really have to be mindful of what you're listening to. And I know it's not an easy one to cut out. And it is like a change and i know a lot of people have been listening to like christian rap or like afro beats gospel i'm not feeling it too much but i mean try it out and see if you feel it i kind of just find maybe i might create a playlist of like songs that i listen to at the gym i found some christian ones that i mean they're not like shy rag but they get the job done and i start my day in a mindset where i can hear from god i've created an environment conducive to hear from god and this is just something that's not kind of random that came to mind and it's pretty self-explanatory but it's still very very important of like good noise and bad noise music overall it's good it's just in the context of which you use it i can sit at a worship session there's still there's technically still noise going around me but it's good noise to where i can hear from god and i can sit at a club and listen to a different kind of noise however that's not really conducive to hearing from god so make sure you surround yourself with good noise another thing that i want to say on the topic of hearing from god is god one he speaks to us in different ways i feel like i referenced that already but another one that i've been doing recently is after i read my word i don't just read my word pray and go about my day sometimes i will literally set a timer either play the William Augusto audio that I'm gonna try and find it and link it down below. I either play that music, I set a time for five minutes, I sit still, or sometimes I don't play any music and I simply sit still and just have a moment where I try to clear my thoughts. And as somebody who always kind of has thoughts like roaming, it's kind of a bit of a hard one for me. So sometimes I remember when I started, I started with like two minutes, but little by little, I just kind of increased it. Just simply sit there and God will speak to you that way. I think sometimes we read the word and that's good. And that's a very big part about hearing the word of God. But I also think in all of it also create a moment to hear from God. I feel like I'm saying the same thing, but I hope you get my Just sit still for a second and be like, okay, God, I've heard your word, but I now want to hear from you. I'm not trying to go into like meditation, like yoga and stuff, but sometimes I'm just like in and out. Like that's all I keep in my mind just so I'm like, I don't let my mind wander and I try to let God speak to me that way. Another way that I like to hear from God is I simply take a journal, pen and paper. Y'all know I love journaling on this channel. Take a pen and paper and say God talk to me and literally put the pen down to paper and thoughts will start to come. A lot of these things that I write, my notes app is filled with it because even when I go to the worship night, God will literally drop an idea in my head and I start typing and literally it's just like more and more and more and more and before I know my whole notes page is filled. Literally sometimes you just have to put the pen to paper and let God literally guide your hand. Same thing when I do these videos, I'm like, God, what do you want me to say to your children? I put pen to paper, God will give me an idea, I'll start writing. And literally as I'm writing it down, it's this weird experience because I know I'm writing it down, but like I don't know what I'm about to write before I write it. It's simply like the ideas are just coming, I'm simply just writing it down. So that's another way to truly hear from God. And another part of this that I'm still going to talk about, and I'm kind of going to shift gears a little bit, it still comes with hearing God, but I also want to emphasize the point of 
even when you begin to hear from God in big decisions, I feel like I've maybe touched this topic before, don't get caught up in um, analysis paralysis, I think is what I called it last time, where you feel like you need to hear God before you take any single step. Yes, you need to hear from God. That's very, very important. But one of the beautiful things about um, dwelling in his presence and walking with God is that like, you won't, I'm trying to word this correctly, you won't exactly need to hear the direct words of like, take this path. But you will know that that's a path that God wants for you. And I'm going to use a story in the Bible to kind of like help bring this to life. Because I think a lot of us, we get in the mindset of like, God, give me a sign. It's like, God, if this is what you want me to do, let me see an orange car or something like that. And that's our way of like communicating with God and hearing from God. And while I think that's important, I think there comes a point where you can't pray those prayers anymore. Think about the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth and Mary. And this was just my personal revelation. This is why I feel like God kind of dropped in my spirit. Again go back to God, pray about it. But this is just what I felt like he revealed to me. So Elizabeth got pregnant around the same time Mary got pregnant. And Zechariah and Elizabeth, they were very old. And Zechariah was kind of like, yo, how would this happen? Like my wife is old, like childbearing age past, all that stuff like that. And then until it happened, Zechariah was mute. And Mary too, who was a virgin, who her situation too looked impossible. And she kind of asked God like, hey, like how's this gonna happen? And then God sent Angel Gabriel to kind of explain to her who Jesus Christ would be. And then she was like, okay, cool, I'm excited for it. I think about both of those situations that Zechariah and Mary, they both kind of asked God like, how would this happen? However, Mary was sent Angel Gabriel and Zechariah was made mute. I think about this in the sense that there are certain things that you can do at the beginning of your journey that in the latter end of your journey, you should kind of know what God wants you to do. So Mary, of course, was a lot younger than Zachariah. Zachariah had been through earth. At that point, he is eating the solid food of God. They talk about milk and solid food. Mary might have still been eating, like still been drinking milk at that point. But Zachariah, he was eating solid food. There'll come a point in your faith with God where somebody said that she was like, it's almost like common sense, but in a way where like, you just know that God is with you on this path. I hope that is really making sense. But I really just wanted to drop that in there of also like, it's important to hear from God before you take any big steps in your life. However, don't get in the mindset of God, I need a sign, God, I need a sign, God, I need a sign. I need to hear from you exactly because sometimes you really just need to take that step and know that God is with you on this journey. And that comes with dwelling in him and that comes with knowing who he is. And that can only happen if you spend time with him seven days a week and not the one day a week. Whew, that was a that was a that was a mouthful. That was a lot of words that I just said. But um yeah, I really, really just wanted to share this video of hearing from God because I think it's a lot of stuff. It's one thing that we all desire. And I remember being so frustrated. We used to go to our church retreat and it was like year after year, I was like, you know what? This is the year that I hear from God. And I always thought I was gonna hear that like audible voice, which if you are struggling with building your personal relationship with God, I have a video on my channel kind of like building a personal relationship with God 101. So if you wanna go watch that, go check that out. But I remember just being like, God, I wanna hear the voice. I have to hear the voice. And it's just like, if I don't hear this voice at this retreat, I'm never coming back. I it was very, very dramatic. Yeah, it's just one of those moments where you have to know that God speaks in different ways, number one. Number two, also create an environment where you can hear from God. And number three, don't get in the mindset, like I said, of looking for signs, 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 signs all the time. Sometimes you might not get a sign. And also, I really, really want to encourage you to find God in the little things. I think when you search from God, you can see God. When you see God, you can hear. And I know the music one is a controversial one, but make sure your thoughts are pure. Make sure your thoughts are holy. Make sure your thoughts are authentic, real. I honestly might do a video on daydreaming because I didn't know it was, you know, we should not do biblically. I just thought it was like, you know, whatever. But constantly have to like train your thoughts to like center back to earth and not like the fantasy that you've created in your head. But yeah, so I'm definitely, I'm probably gonna make a video about that. And one of the things that I kind of wrote, I said, when you dwell, you won't need to hear every yes. You can just know that God is your guide and certain decisions, they just come with you. Anyway, that's it from me, guys. I shall see you in the next one and bye. If it was not Chirac, I was not gonna squat in the morning. Nope. And like with the music one too, it's really like, cause like sometimes you wake up and certain songs will just keep playing over and over in your head. And depending on what song it is, that's what's gonna constantly keep playing through your head throughout your day. Some of the lyrics, I'm like, I don't want this playing throughout my head. Like, I want, holy is your name. God help me.